What are you trying to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to have to do that. <laughs> Alright. Okay, okay. All right, I'm live, I think like 10 seconds early, but whatever. Here I am. Thanks, Sam Getz. I know you. I'm glad that you like it. You had a lot to do with it. So, there's that. <clears throat> yeah, no problem, Kentucker. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Adam Hump, your question is, the person who recorded the video, is that the same person who was the actor in it? And it is. The actor is a guy named James Cochran, and I did have him do the voiceover. Um, it's kind of like loosely based off his life. It's like a fictionalized version of him. Uh, he definitely never got shot or lost his eyesight or his left arm, but... Uh, yeah, it's the same guy. I grew up with him ever since I was like eight years old. It's a huge influence. Any other questions? There we go. Uh, Kentucker, I'm answering your question. Was it a story you were after or more of a vibe? Um, you know, it was more of like the story, but uh, I wanted to just kind of show these scenes that I liked. Um, the first movie I had made, which is on my website, which is 120 volts, I'm actually not, I was not very happy with it. And I'm still kind of not happy with it, but there's like a moment in it that I like. And I wanted to go after that moment, and I wanted to kind of make a whole movie that was like that. And it's like a montage scene in it. Um, so I wanted to do that, and I wanted to make something that was good. And so I guess I was kind of after a vibe, like pacing-wise to a certain extent, but I wasn't aware of it until I got in and started editing it. And I feel like... That was one of the things I was really happy with when I was finished it. I was really happy with the pacing of, of the of the short and the whole, and I really felt like I got a, a good grasp on that. Um, so I suppose I was after both the story and the vibe, but at first it was all about the story and capturing um, a way of storytelling that I, I thought I had kind of touched on in my original short that I wanted to do for this whole entire one, and then... I kind of flushed it out with the vibe and getting the pacing right and accomplishing what I wanted to in the end. Uh, Steven, uh, what's Cochran up to now? He just had a second kid. He's got two kids. Um, he lives in my hometown in Pennsylvania. And uh, he works, I feel like I should make another movie about him, but he works at a, a farm and he organizes the Haunted Hayride. He completely organizes the haunted house himself. He decorates it. He comes up with the themes and everything. And uh, that's kind of his job besides, like, selling Christmas trees and stuff like that. It's actually really interesting to me. Um, but, yeah, he's awesome. I think he's on right now, but I'm not sure. All right, I'm getting behind. Jason Tippett, what films were you watching before you made Cochran? Okay. Uh, well, I was watching Gummo a lot, and there was a... 
there was a quote that Harmony Kareen said about Gummo, which was uh, that he wasn't trying to make a movie about a story. He was just trying to make scenes that he liked. And I really thought about that when I was making Cochrane and when I was like writing it and everything. And I thought, you know, that's what Gummo really does. And I really like Gummo. So I thought maybe I could accomplish that as well. And I was also watching Magnolia a lot. I know they're like really opposite films, but there was something about Magnolia where it has like really awesome pacing and those, those scenes that take forever, you know, it'll be like 15 minutes of a scene just going through like the hallways of the, uh, the studio where they're doing the kids show. And I guess that kind of had a lot to do with my pacing and, uh, I guess Gummo had a lot to do with the idea behind it of what I wanted to do, you know, just do these scenes that I really liked and not spend too much time explaining things in, in the beginning. Um, Kentucker, how did it all start? Did you make it with only friends? How many folks were involved? Uh, it all started because I was working on Bruno, which is actually showing on Wednesday. I've known Sam Getz for a very long time, uh, since we were like five years old. And he was telling me I need to make another short, which I agreed on, but he kind of, he motivated me to do it. He was giving me deadlines and, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> I wrote a script and the first script had like three endings that I didn't really like and I didn't know what I wanted. And uh, I had everything up to the ending figured out. I just didn't know how to end it. And one day I was on the subway going to work in New York and I was listening to music and I totally zoned out. And... Uh, I actually missed my stop for work. The train seriously went to the last stop. It sits there for 10 minutes and I was so zoned out that everybody got off the train and I was still just kind of staring at the floor zoning out and people got back on and it started going the other direction back to where I live. And at that moment is when I was kind of figuring out the end that I ended up doing. Um, so uh, that's kind of how it started, and I wanted to make a movie about this guy, because I'd grown up with him my whole entire life, and he, he has a lot to do with who I am now, like, personality-wise and everything. Um, I was kind of a fairly good student until I started hanging out with him, and then I was getting, like, E's and F's, but I had adventures, so it was kind of worth it. But um, we did make it with, I did make it with only my friends, uh, with Super 8 cameras from Salvation Armies, and one borrowed by uh, Jonathan Yee. Um... And then my brother helped me on it, Sam Getz helped me on it, his brother, uh, James Cochran, obviously, and then some of the other actors involved, like Chris Cipriano, uh, my girlfriend was Craft Services, it was definitely like a very homegrown thing. So probably like, I guess like six people were involved, not many at all, and they all just worked for food. So that's that. Um, Kentucker again, how planned out was it? Was there a storyboard shot list? How much footage ended up getting used? Uh, yeah, I planned it out. I wrote, I think I wrote like three versions of the script. Um, I storyboarded everything just because I need to do that. Like really visual like that. I, I need to have something to cross off to know I'm getting all the shots. Um, how much footage? We shot about an hour of footage. We shot everything in... November of that year, which was like 2005. It took me like three years to edit it, which is ridiculous. But uh, we shot everything in like two weekends. And then there's the shot of the dead bird in the snow. And that's what took me forever. I was just waiting for snow. And I had this bird I had bought on eBay that people sell so other people can taxidermy them. And it was just in my freezer in Brooklyn. And I was just waiting for it to snow. And eventually one day it snowed. And I had a friend over who helped me, and we just shot it in the backyard of this apartment I was staying in. So there is pretty much like, I guess, since it's eight minutes long and there's about an hour, hour footage, there's 50 minutes of footage just not really used. Um, but it was just like doing takes over and over again. It wasn't really stuff that was cut out. So there's the answer to that. Sammy G represent. You guys should check out Sam Getz's movie on Wednesday, Bruno. It's awesome. I did production design for it. I was on it for like months, spread out for two years. Sam 
Sam Getz, any good stories about shooting movies with Jimmy Cochran back in the day? I'm assuming you're talking about when we were kids and we tried to make a, an alien invasion movie. Myself, Sam, and Cochran. And uh, we wanted to make a spaceship landing, so we took a baseball and... Or no, not baseball, basketball, and we covered it in a sweatshirt and covered that in gasoline and decided that if we lit that on fire and threw it across the woods, it would look like a spaceship crashing, but instead it just lit like a quarter mile of woods on fire that we spent the next 20 minutes trying to put out before we lit the woods across the street from my parents' house on fire. Luckily, we were successful in putting out the fire, but we never finished the movie. Just fine. Uh, Yoko. Uh, did Cochran do magic before, or did he learn it for the film? No, this is, like, very much based off of him. He, just, he learned all that stuff on his own. The whole time we were growing up, he was obsessed with, like, juggling and uh, blowing fire. And uh, what wasn't in the movies, it was, we made a lot of bombs. He, uh, he didn't graduate high school, that's correct. But it's not because he was stupid. He was smart, but he just was interested in things like researching the anarchist cookbook in 1998 and making bombs and trying to make thermite and ridiculous stuff like that. And I was just kind of along for the ride. Um, but I guess, I guess making bombs and doing magic don't really go hand in hand, but for him it did. So he did a lot of magic and he made a lot of bombs which is probably something I should touch on in a different short, because it's ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, he did all that stuff. Like, everything about him is based off of him for the most part, besides getting shot and losing his arm and his eyesight in his left eye. He owned all those guns. He knows how to shoot guns. He knows how to do a lot of things I don't know how to do. <laughs> So there's that. The movie was shot on Super 8. I don't know if anyone was going to ask that, but it's kind of obvious. But someone did ask me that when they showed it South by. Um, I want to shoot everything I can on Super 8. Because I love it, but it's not really the easiest thing in the world to do. But I hope to do it again soon. Kentucker, did he really deliver packages? What was your worst job? Was every day terrible? He did deliver packages for a while, and uh, I think he hated that job. I'm pretty sure I remember hating them, him hating that job. The really funny thing about it, which isn't in Cochrane, because it wasn't until after, uh, it wasn't until after the summertime that you would notice it, is since he drove around all day, he'd have one arm sitting out, hanging out of the window, that would get completely tan, like crazy tan, like crazy dark brown, and then half of his face from the sun would get really dark as well. So he'd be walking around as this half tan person, which was hilarious. Um, so yeah, he definitely did that, and I believe every day was terrible. Um, my worst job was I was a cart boy at a uh, supermarket. And I mean, it wasn't really that terrible, but what was terrible about it was since it was so repetitive, is I would have nightmares when I'd go to sleep that I was doing it all night long. So it was like I was dreaming about working and not getting paid for it, which since that job has become a reason for me to quit any job I've ever had. I will not. If I start dreaming that I'm doing my job, I have to quit it because it's the worst feeling in the whole entire world. Uh, Sam, any problems with shooting Super 8? We didn't really have any problems, I don't think. Uh, no. I mean, we didn't have any problems, but I, I'm aware of problems that will happen now. Uh, I mean, we had to do certain things in order to shoot Super 8, like not have sync sound. Because a lot of those sound effects are just ridiculous, weird sound effects that I downloaded um, via, like, websites and muffled them up so they worked with the feeling of the Super 8. Um, 
And, uh, I mean, besides that, maybe some, like, exposure stuff when we were trying to shoot early in the morning, but not really. I mean, it has a lot of limitations, but it was, the short was kind of designed with those limitations in mind. So, not really that many problems, though one day I really want to shoot a whole entire feature on Super 8 with Sync Sound, and I know that will have a million problems. It will be crazy. But uh, I really want to do it at some point. So, yeah. Any other questions? Steven, I don't know if you're still on, but I am really excited to see your movie. Oh, you are on. <laughs> what have you been working on since Cochran, working on any other, any more films? Uh, I, I made that short, I made a short with my brother Joe, which was a documentary about our parents, and it had a lot to do with death, which is uh, called Three Envelopes. It's on my website, if you want to check it out, just jamesbgannon.com. Um... It showed in like a few festivals last year, but it, for the most part, did really terribly at festivals, which is fine because uh, we didn't really make it for that. But uh, I like it. It's 15 minutes long if you want to check it out. Um, right now, I actually am going to be working on my fourth draft of a short I want to shoot this summer. Uh, called It's called Crossbow right now. Uh, it's about all I can really say. I'm going to shoot it. I'm gonna shoot on 5D, but I've got this, I got this crazy lens I'm gonna use that's gonna look really weird. You'll see, it's really kind of a like lo-fi, like I, like I want it to look kind of organic. Um, <clears throat> and then I have a second short. I actually just started kind of thinking about that. I don't have written yet, but I have ideas for it. And I kind of want to shoot it this summer as well. And I think it's gonna be called Burlington Island. But uh, yeah, I'll probably have that stuff premiere on No Fudge once it goes online, so everyone will know about it, about it then. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. Yoko, what films are you working on right now? I think I just answered that with Stevens, but uh, Crossbow, hopefully, will get done this summer. Well, Crossbow's definitely going to get done. Maybe the other one, if I can write it. And uh, i got to make a feature soon. I'm getting old. I'm going to be 30 in September, and that was like my goal when I was 18 was to have one done by the time I was 23. So I'm many years behind. So I got to start working on that. Um, what is Link It Up, Sam? <laughs> Any chance the Xfinity commercial that I was watching was what you've been up to? I wish. I actually. I am shooting the commercial this Saturday, which is kind of crazy. It's going to be the first paid directing job I'm ever doing. So, I mean, I'll post it on Facebook or whatever once I'm finished. But, uh, yeah, I'm a little excited about that. You're going bald, dude, Sam. Sam, you're going to go, you're going to be really bald on yours on Wednesday. Um... I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, I'm really excited about this No Budge, you know, live Q&A thing. I can't wait to watch the other films coming up. Uh, Sam, Stevens, really, really excited to check everything out. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Bad Fever, but you have to. It's amazing. And Kentucky Accident is directed by Dustin Guy Deppa. That movie's really, really good. I can't wait to get my copy of it which I ordered from Factory 25. Uh, all right. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks, Matt. Any other questions? I think I'm good. Definitely support No Budge, it's amazing. Super excited to see the other movies.
Thanks, guys. See you later. Thanks. <laughs>